So thank you for joining uh, this webinar this afternoon. Um, it's uh, far better weather than the last time I did a webinar. It was uh, chucking out with snow. I think a lot of people weren't able to make it because they were drenching through the, the difficult roads to be able to join. But uh, thank you for, for coming along just now. Uh, probably got my timing slightly wrong as I know some schools have actually already finished for uh, Easter already because they've got this week and next week off. Uh, wherefore I think a majority of them actually finish off either Wednesday or Thursday this week. Um, uh, but this webinar we're going to go through uh, a bit more about Microsoft Education 365, some of the, the myths and some of the technology that you get with it. Uh, I think it's uh, important to, to understand some of these and sometimes hearing it from a non microsoft -y kind of helps to get a bit more of a, uh, an understanding of what's there. So hopefully everybody can see the slide. That's one thing I forgot to check beforehand. So if someone doesn't just mind popping in the, the little chat box to say, um, uh, uh, that they can see my side, that would be great. Uh, but I'm going to assume you are and just kind of carry on from this point of view. Thank you, Dean. Um, I recently did a, uh, a, a questionnaire uh, on uh, and asking people usage of their Office 365 education. And one of the questions that was in there was, um, Microsoft 365, do you know what it is? Are you taking advantage of it? And you can kind of see the different answers that we had here. So we've got never heard of it. Is that what we're using already? It's, it's the same as Office 365, isn't it, right? Uh, I'm a bit confused by it all, not really sure what's going on. So yes, we're evaluating it. And you can see that final answer there. Theme. We are taking full advantage of these offerings. But actually, when you look at the percentage of these, um, we've actually got um, around two thirds of people not quite understanding that Microsoft 365 education is something different or what the full opportunities are. And that's why I thought, you know what, it's a second uh, webinar in this series that I want to do. Um, I kind of want to go through kind of what is Microsoft 365 education um, uh, and being able to demonstrate what's going on um, with the different technologies, why you're going to get this, whether you kind of want to or not. Well, if you want to be unlicensed for Microsoft or not being licensed by them, then um, uh, that's a way of not getting this. Uh, but certainly want to be able to demonstrate uh, the benefits that you're going to get as part of uh, moving to the, the, the new ES agreement style for, for Microsoft 365 education. So a bit of agenda. So the first thing I want to actually point out is the URL down in the bottom right hand corner. If you able to attend my last one or ever used Slido before, um, it's a great way for you to be able to uh, ask questions. Uh, people can vote up those questions and it helps me as a presenter at the end, depending on time. I can kind of just look at the top three questions as an example or five uh, based on what people are doing. So if you go to slido.com uh, and you type in that code of uh, hash W442, uh, you'll be able to um, see that and just to show you as an example what that looks like um, is once I've kind of logged in and uh, I've put that code in there, you can kind of type in your question, say hello, um, type that, please don't put hello, please put your question in there and you can kind of see this thumbs up to say, yep, I, I want that question asked. So that's a, a great way for to be able to collect those kind of questions and, and try and answer those in there. Um, putting them in the chat window doesn't... Um, uh, uh, doesn't help too much because I don't necessarily see those, but uh, certainly if you go to um, uh, www.slido.com and type in that code W442, and that's on the bottom right hand corner of most of the slides when we go through it, so you can always connect up on there and, and click through when you're ready. But the agenda is kind of why is this license change? What's the benefit towards the, uh, the actual license change? Uh, and then we're going to go through the different features of what's in Microsoft 365 Education. I did consider writing these all out on the agenda slide, but I thought, no, I want you to kind of go through the slides with me. And it is quite a slide heavy uh, presentation. Um, it's no kind of demos, um, but certainly um, uh, there's lots of um, uh, things for us to go through and talk about uh, as part of this. So just a little bit about myself. So I'm Alex Pierce. I uh, founded a company called BFC Networks and we do Office 365 and uh, we talk more about some of the Azure services and EMS and Intune and we're looking more and more and kind of moving into this Microsoft 365 education space. Uh, and because I do these webinars and Office 365 uh, talks and presentations, I've been awarded by Microsoft as, a, as, a, uh, as an MVP. So you can get hold of me on Twitter. You can always follow up with me. Um, 
So I've just had a message come up. You're sharing your screen. No, nope, I, I know that. It's just telling me, do I want to stop it? No, I'm, I want to present. Uh, you can email me. You can get me uh, on my blog there where you can also get a follow up of the, the recording and the slides. But feel free to, to always send me a tweet. I'll do my best to answer your question uh, whenever I can. Let's just talk a little bit about Microsoft 365 Education. So what is it Microsoft are doing? Why, why is it changing and who is it changing and who's being affected? Now, the first thing is to say is that they, are, they have and they are changing the EES agreement, whether this is your uh, EES or EES OVS. Now, those are both your licensing types, depending on the number of members of staff that you've got. So most schools and, and colleges have kind of got the uh, EES OVS, wherefore um, larger organizations have got an EES agreement. So this is affecting everybody. So um, you have the option now with your current license provider to, to renew on your current agreement for maybe a year. In, for, for large customers, you can do three years. But inevitably, at some point, you're going to move to this Microsoft 365 education license. It's a great benefit, personally. I think there's some great opportunities that's there. Uh, and there's additional services available to you for about the same cost. So there is a slight cost difference, but there's also a different way of being able to calculate staff, which we'll go into a little bit later on. So what's in this Microsoft 365 license? Now, there's two different types. There's actually there's a, th a third. There's an A1, there's an A3, and A5. We're not going to go into A1 today. There's, there's not actually too many benefits to it, but certainly we're going to talk about the, the A3 and the A5. And you can kind of see, and you'll see this slide come up a little bit later on on this little box, um, but we've got Office 365, A3, and A5. So these additional services within Office 365. We've got Windows A3 and A5. Again, we'll go into those. And we've also got EMS, so the Enterprise Mobility and Security. We're also going to get Minecraft Education Edition. And we can also keep all our kind of cows, our client access licenses for our productivity suite, depending on how you buy those licenses. But that's just a little caveat. But 99% um, of you will uh, won't really have this problem, um, but um, this is kind of what a Microsoft 365 license is. So I can see where some of the confusion has come in as part of the, that poll and those answers that I gave you earlier on. Because I'm going to, there's Office 365, there's Microsoft 365, I'm going to Microsoft 365 includes Office 365. And, and that's kind of where I think people are starting to get confused. And that's where I thought actually it'd be a good idea just to break that up, add these additional things and, and go through this presentation just now uh, around those different elements. So the first what I want to do is just talk to you about the, the Office 365 element uh, side of things. So um, what we have here is um, on the left hand side is your current free offering that you get. So whether you are purchasing Microsoft licensing or not, you still get Office 365 for free. So you get your Exchange Online, your SharePoint, your Skype for Business, the Office in the browser, Teams, you get your school data sync, you get all, all those benefits that you're used to now. And you see that down as the Office 365 A1 license. And you may well also have the A3 license, uh, A1, sorry, the A1 Plus license. So this is the Office 365 A1 and the Office 365 A1 Plus. Plus giving you the Office 365 Pro Plus, so your client applications uh, available to you. And you can go and you can get that from going to office.com forward slash teachers and halfway down the page, uh, it does a, um, a bit of an online wizard for you to be able to go off and uh, add those licenses based on your yes agreement so it does kind of this back end uh, check to see if your licenses and then gives you these benefit licenses and that's a, that's a key thing to point out this moment in time is that actually what you get is the um, a, a one cloud benefit from your current EES agreement so just the one so it's not not too many just one that's there so um, looking at this, when we start looking at the page going across, yes, we start looking at these A3 and A4, but we've actually got the Office 365 A3 and the Office 365 A5 as part of these different benefits that are there. So what did they actually look like at this moment in time? Let me bring my slide across for you for this one. So 
So when we look at a bit more of some of these A3 options that come in is, and um, we're just going to look at the kind of this top section um, where we've kind of got the, the additional um, uh, dots that are there. So yes, we get the same within the, the free offering as we do with the A3 and the A5. But we also get some additional things uh, as part of the A3. So that's actually where we're going to get our Office 365 Pro Plus now. So it's just going to be delivered through there uh, as part of that. We also have um, uh, additional things such as um, the um, uh, Office 365 additional storage capabilities. Um, and when we start looking at Office 365 A5, um, there is the ability to be able to have things like Skype broadcasting, Skype PSTN, or now it's called Cloud Phone. Um, so we can actually use the phone facilities. And I noticed that somebody's actually dialed in on the phone uh, to be able to listen in. Um, and those are the kind of capabilities that we've now got. So I have a telephone number that's attached to my Skype for Business account, and that comes in with uh, as part of the Office 365 um, uh, A5 license. So we've got some kind of benefits that we actually get there as part of that. Slides. So our Office 365, we're getting additional benefits as we kind of go up. So there is a difference between the Office 365 A3 and the Microsoft 365 A3. And you can kind of see here, I've tried to give them in the different colors uh, and you'll see this as we actually go through at this moment in time. What we have here as part of this A3 license, the Microsoft 365 A3 license is that we get the Office 365 A3, we get Windows 10 Education A3, we get EMS and we get Minecraft for Education. So our ES agreements will switch to this kind of cloud licensing, which then gives you this capability of being able to have all these additional cloud features. So we'll go into what's in, in EMS in a bit. We'll look at that one first, then we'll go into Minecraft and we'll go into what does it mean by having Windows into this license agreement. And then we've also got additional features as part of the 365 A5 license. So we've got Office 365 A5, where I talked about that phone. Uh, conferencing is just one of those features that you get there. Um, and we also get um, the, the same E5. Um, we get the education um, uh, edition of Minecraft. And just looking down this right hand side, what happens is that we pay for based on like we do at this moment, we pay for staff and we get so many licenses per member of staff. Um, we buy one license and we get 40 student licenses available to us. So there's no additional cost for, for students. And I've actually seen one uh, licensing provider to try and quote for both students and the faculty. No, if you pay just for the faculty and the, the students will come free uh, as part of that license. So for every one paid, you get that 40 that are there. So if you're at the current at the moment and you're on pro and you look at it kind of, well, what am I going to go from and go to? You can see here on this left hand side, you've got the education desktop license that you get as part of your EES agreement. You get that Office 365 Pro Plus license, that one benefit I talked about in the cloud earlier on. And you get your Windows Software Assurance and you get the ability to install your productivity suites and all that kind of thing. And you get your cows um, there at the very bottom. When we look at just the Microsoft 365 A3 license, we've got things like Office 365 A3, which we talked about earlier on. We get the Windows A3, so um, where we can upgrade to Windows Education Edition. We get Enterprise Mobility Suite, we get Minecraft, and then we still get all those productivity uh, cows, and we can still install. If you've still got a SharePoint license on-prem or Exchange still there at this moment in time, you can still continue to use those, uh, and that's what those licenses capabilities that give you. Uh, that's there. So what is the value to new customers? And this is kind of what I was going on through to earlier on. So within the Office 365 A3 license, you've got additional security. We've got Skype for business. We've got bookings, which is actually the staff hub. So you're, uh, and you've got um, uh, a few things that are there already. Um, Enterprise Mobility Suite, as I said, we'll go into these a little bit more and a few some of additional features that are there. Uh, and because I said Minecraft education, and that's one of the more exciting things that I see um, from uh, educationalists who are like, yes, I can now start using Minecraft and there's no additional cost really to me to be able to do that. So let's just break down some of these as we kind of go through. As I said, 
Minecraft. It's it's great talking to to some customers, and they're like, "Great, does that mean I'm going to get Minecraft now?" It's like, "Yes, it is," and they're really excited with the opportunities that Minecraft and STEM, and the opportunities that Microsoft are adding and adding Code.com, and uh, I think it's actually Code.org, uh, but lots of different educational tools into this immersive world that uh, it can be using. So this might be great more for the kind of the primary and secondary schools. But maybe not as much in the college and the and, and the higher education. But certainly, this is a great way for kids to be engaged uh, and to be able to to kind of get into a building and logic and troubleshooting. And they can do it in a world that they're immersed in and they can enjoy. And the teacher can go off and build things. And there's some great examples online uh, of around this kind of technology and how it's been used and how people are using it. Uh, and I would encourage anybody to to go off and to to have a have a play with Minecraft. If they get the licenses, yeah, you may well disable them for all the students and all the staff, but at least you can go off and you can um, you have this now as part of that license that's there. Let's talk about EMS. So enterprise mobility and security. So what is kind of enterprise and what's there? So. Click the slide, give me two seconds to go back. So we've actually kind of got uh, a few different products which we'll go into more. So what's the whole point of this enterprise mobility and security? So the idea is to give you more security, more deployment. So when I speak to network managers and IT managers and IT directors, I find that this is the bit that they're excited about. They've wanted this, but not necessarily found the, 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 the benefits of having to pay the extra for it on top of their EES agreement. So here's a great way for them to be able to get it as, as I say, earlier on a very similar price. So we've got a better and more security around the identity, and then we can do more protection of our data. It's not just the log on, because that's pretty secure as it is when it's stored in Azure ID, but it's protection of our data, um, doing it from anywhere, from any device where they've logged into it. So if you think about when we open up files, maybe on our mobile device, you've got to log in to be able to do that. And that's where it keeps that file secure for you. And we can also do some uh, protection and, and data analysis and kind of check these different things before anything happens. So where do, what products do we actually get as part of this EMS uh, section that's there? So we've got Azure AD, um, so the Azure Active Directory Premium. And depending on if you go with E3 or E5, you get the slightly few additional features. So we've got an additional kind of authentication of features that we get within um, the cloud benefit here. The main one that I actually see that people are quite pleased and excited about is as part of uh, Azure Active Di Directory Premium, they have the ability to do password re re reset right back to their Active Directory. So if you're running AD Connect, uh, or your third party uh, offering uh, enables this feature, uh, then they can reset their password in the cloud and it can sync it back to your local Active Directory. You can also configure it so maybe they set up, maybe you do this just for staff, where they can go into the browser, it texts them a particular uh, six digit code, uh, and then they can do the self service password reset as part of that. We've got Microsoft Intune. Uh, and this is kind of almost like our SCCM, our ways of being able to manage uh, codes in the cloud uh, to be able to deliver off um, um, the um, management of devices, deploying certificates, deploying Wi-Fi settings, locking machines down, all that kind of thing, uh, and being able to do that from there. We've got some uh, information protection. So this is kind of where we can do data that gets added to a Word document. We can lock a Word document or a document library down so it couldn't be, can't be printed. It can detect what's going on inside of uh, a document. So maybe you have a, a setting um, um, uh, that um, where uh, data is pulled from a particular source or it recognizes that a student name or address has been added to that document that it can't be downloaded, it can only be printed or it can't be printed, you can't take a screenshot of it. So those are the kind of things we can do with this information protection um, that's there. Um, we've got some Microsoft Cloud App security. So this is if you if you want to be able to take advantage of building your own application. That actually comes as part of uh, uh, the E5 license. So that may not be too much benefit to too many people. But we've also got advanced threat protection and, and analytics that's in there, which gives you this ability uh, to be able to set certain things and blocks on URLs that are coming through emails and um, additional security that might be required uh, to be able to get uh, certain data that comes out there. So 
it was kind of analyzing things as things are going on to prevent certain type of data from getting corrupted uh, or anything like that. So those are some of those. And you can always spend some time looking back uh, at some of these should you want to be able to do a later date. So this is kind of just some of where it breaks down into these different license options, as I said earlier on. So the A3 has some of these, the A5 has uh, all the others. So um, even though some of these what's there, there, we've still got MFA within the, 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 the basic license, as you can see within the premium P1 there, it says uh, MFA, conditional access and advanced security. So we've still got MFA. So this is the multi-form authentication. You get that as part of the free license now. So this is where maybe like myself, if I try and log in now, it also sends a text to my telephone uh, and I need to be able to, to write that in or, or it calls me depending on what setting that I've got. Conditional access can be, you know what, if I'm inside the school or inside the college network, um, I recognize that so I'm just going to let you type in your password or I'm going to log you automatically in as part of the authentication process that I got in if you're outside the network uh, you're taking your laptop home or whatever it may well be I, okay I, I don't recognize the location you are in so I'm going to make you do an additional authentication step so it keeps you nice and secure uh, as part of that we've got some additional protection and, uh, and reporting that comes within that p2 offering uh, Intune, uh, as I said, Intune comes with both of these and that's why people are, are quite excited about it and the ability to be able to go off and protect the devices where uh, data is being pulled from them. So, for example, I'm, I'm an iPhone user. I could open up a Word document and I can do certain settings within not the whole phone, but the, the Microsoft applications that are in there. So that helps protect and deploy certain things and make sure that, um, for example, my wife does not use a ping number on her phone. She does not want to have one. It's too inconvenient and she's fine if her phone gets lost and that's completely up to her. Maybe not the way I would like it to be, um, but I can say, right, before you can log into your email, I'm going to stipulate certain rules onto your phone uh, to have a PIN number, a secure six letter character. I can kind of define those settings should I want to be able to do so. Uh, and that's where Intune really helps to be able to do this kind of deployment and keeps the, uh, the, the data um, secure when I talked about consent and GDPR, GDPR in the last session and um, webinar that I did, I talked about actually that the, the device is probably the first point of entry to how to access that data. So the fact that you can set these kind of things and app deployments and that kind of thing will really help. And we'll go into a little bit more about that in a short while. Got some of those information protection as it's kind of called there. So the ability to do certain um, uh, devices and encrypting devices and put in certain uh, information rights management and locking down devices that are there as, and uh, some of those uh, threat protection as well. So that's why some people are kind of uh, quite excited, certainly from the IT side of it. This is kind of my ability to manage devices uh, and how they connect to my content in the cloud in a more secure manner as part of that. Now, I did say I was going to go into Intune just a little bit further, uh, but um, we've now got uh, in Education Tenants, we've got this Intune for Education edition. So first we're, we're saying is that we still got normal Intune. So even with this license, we get normal Intune, but the Intune education gives you a bit more of a lightweight uh, tool. I think the idea is that uh, for schools like primary schools who may well not have a full time technician that they can go in and they can decide to deploy applications. And that's one of the things you can do with Intune. You can take uh, uh, applications from the store and automatically assign them to staff, to students. So when they log on, those applications appear in that kind of manner. So this kind of just makes it easier, um, should I want to be able to do so as part of that uh, in tune for education. But as I said, you've still got full blown version if you're in there, if you want to be able to do so. Some of the benefits of if you've got something like school data sync uh, is that you can say you are as part of maths. They all if you are in a math class, you automatically get all these applications uh, that are assigned to you. So this is kind of where some of the the education edition of Intune and school data sync sit on top of each other to help you to be able to get more out of it should you want to be able to do so. And that's why on the screen, as you can see, we've got nine applications that can be deployed. And you actually notice those, as if you can see them, they are Microsoft applications and the last one being Intune, uh, not Intune, sorry, being Minecraft. And um, we can deploy Minecraft uh, edition to uh, users that have got it. So it's a great way of being able to, to, to manage that deployment and being able to do more that's there. 
We can also do a lot more with Intune and linking it with SCCM, as it says in some of those. But it really helps to be able to see what devices are up to date. Are they patched? Let's make sure they're patched before they can access data. So it really does give you a great way of being able to manage all those devices, especially when they can join your Azure Active Directory in a domain join process, if you haven't locked that down, without any necessarily control. All they're going to do is add their work and school accounts as part of that. Let's just briefly talk about Windows in um, the Microsoft 365 Education License. Now you're probably thinking, hang on a minute, what, why am I paying for a license maybe on, on from a, an EM uh, from the OEM for when I buy the device, and then I've got to pay for it again as part of my Microsoft 365 um, license? Well, the benefit here is that actually what you buy on the on the device may well be more the professional edition or a lower version of that so you're not actually getting all the benefits of what you could have and that's where this license fits in you're actually going to be able to have the uh, windows education edition added to your device where you get most more like the enterprise version of windows so you're getting lots of additional features that you may not get in these lower versions so it's kind of like this software assurance update versions and as microsoft uh, move forward with uh, different versions of windows so we had the anniversary edition then we had creative edition and then they're going to go for whatever the next or maybe it's windows 11 uh, whatever is next as microsoft 365 and the licensing continues to to evolve and moves forward in the cloud you can continue to do so because your Microsoft licensing uh, uh, allows you to do that. So you can take those Windows 10 devices and install the next version of uh, Windows on it. And this may well be something to be looking at as part of Windows as a service. Now, Windows as a service may well be uh, a new thing to you or a new uh, kind of name as part of it. And traditionally, we've installed Windows and then we've gone, well, let's put a service pack on and now let's put the next service pack on. Um, uh, and it's kind of that kind of, well, everything just stays as it is. Windows as a service is this automatic updating version of Windows. Yes, you can still control it. Don't get me wrong. You can still update your versions of Windows as you go along. You can decide how it, but the idea is that as kind of uh, the cloud moves on, Windows needs to keep update with it as well. Uh, and this is kind of, we saw this with the, the latest Windows 10 Creators Edition that more uh, certain features got enabled in Windows because Windows needed to catch up with the cloud. And this was to do with the, um, uh, the uh, OneDrive sync tool. So there are new, uh, the binary code needed to change in Windows to support the OneDrive sync tool to so you could get more out of the cloud. And I think we'll see uh, more announcements over the next couple of months uh, around where Windows needs to get updated so you can get more benefit out of things out of the cloud. So that update with one with OneDrive uh, and the sync tool has allowed you to be able to do files on demand. So it kind of leaves more like a shortcut in Windows for you to go off and be able to get them right click, say, make available offline um, and all that kind of thing. That needed Windows to be updated to make that happen. So Windows as a service and Windows through Microsoft 365 Education allows you to be able to go off and uh, keep your, your estate up to date so you can always get the latest benefit out of the cloud. And the challenge that we've actually got within uh, any network, whether that's education, corporate or, or anywhere else, is that when it's your own device, your own personal device, you are always getting the latest updates. It's always going to the next version of Windows. And the same for Office, we get the latest version of Office 365 um, Pro Plus. So these get updated, you get updated, um, and your device at home is always at the latest and greatest. Wait for our on-prem environments, are in a slower uh, in kind of things. Now, yes, we want to do our own due diligence and all that kind of thing, but it certainly sets us that challenge to, okay, so how how far are we going to go back with our Windows versions? We still know some people who are win running Windows 7, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that because that helps them with their estate. Maybe they've got legacy applications as part of that, but certainly they're going to get more benefits out of their cloud applications by going to Windows 10, Windows as a service, and being able to deploy features so as we evolve, the cloud evolves, so can the device. It's happening at home. So do we need to look at it from a, uh, a, a kind of a network uh, point of view as well? That's there. 
So a bit of a summary. Um, I didn't think we'll go on for too long, too many slides and, and all that kind of thing. But um, we had this uh, um, uh, kind of summary slide here just to go through it. So, so who is being affected by this change? Well, actually, it's everybody. Everybody who's got an EES agreement or an EES OVS license. And somebody wants to put me wrong with that. As far as far, my understanding is that everyone is being changed as part of this. So you've got this previous EES 2015, and it's now going to be this EES 2017. And as I said, you can renew, uh, I think it's for at least one year um, uh, for smaller customers and other customers can go to um, a three year based on what they currently are. But you're not going to get all these cloud benefits. So if you want something like Intune, start looking at that kind of things. The idea of this licensing is that it is cloud first. I talked about earlier on how we've got one benefit at this moment of time based on current licensing agreements. Actually, now we're going to get all sorts. I haven't actually done the count, but as I said, you're going to get um, uh, the A3 of Office 365. You're going to get Intune. You're going to get some of the Azure AD Premium. You're going to get Minecraft. So a cloud-first licensing, um, so you get more benefit from it. Additional features for the similar cost. Now, there is a slight cost change, but there is a difference in how we actually now work out um, your uh, previously it was full time employees. Uh, that's now changed to knowledge workers. Um, I don't want to go into that too much. I think it's probably best to have those conversations with your licensing provider. Uh, but it's now works on kind of who's using an actual computer rather than how many hours somebody works for the school. And I've actually seen people that where the licensing has gone down as well as gone up. Uh, be honest with you around that. Um, but there have been a few changes where um, the, the cost has gone both ways. So, for example, somebody said to me when I was talking to them about this on the phone last week, does that mean I don't have to uh, uh, put, um, now license my minibus driver because he never actually sits at a computer? And I said, no, you don't. And what you can actually do is that if he still needs to be able to access email or a few other options, you can give him that A1 free license that you've currently got uh, as part of there. So uh, it's a great way of being able to look at it. Dinner ladies is another one. Um, so just a, another way. And as I said, talk to your licensing provider. That's part of that. The additional features for a very similar cost. So, yeah, we've got Minecraft and I think lots of kind of educationalists are going to be quite excited about that. And there are lots of different things that you'll be able to, to take advantage of as part of that. Um, you've also got the enterprise mobility and security EMS kind of side of things in the Intune that's in there. We kind of spend a bit of time looking at that. So uh, securing your environment, securing your devices when somebody adds a device that you don't know about. If you think about it, it's probably happening already with all those mobile phones that are connecting to, to it. You can, you can do a bit more security around those and, and kind of lock those down in the way that the school field needs to be protected. And uh, I think GDPR really helps us with, with some of those. Um, we can still continue what we're doing on-prem. Um, so uh, keep going as you are, still get all those services that are there. All we're doing now is getting more from the Microsoft ecosystem in the cloud. So a real great benefit uh, and a great thing that I think that Microsoft have done to put things um, in the cloud and take advantage of those. So I'm going to jump over to Slido and see what I see, see if there's any questions that are there um, that have people have been asked. So um, I see uh, just the one question. So if um, if anybody wants to type any questions into to the chat window, you can now do so and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but the question here is, uh, is the booking uh, bookings to book Skype meetings? No. So bookings is actually a, a separate feature uh, instead. Um, uh, the idea of bookings is um, you could, uh, I think when we first demonstrated by Microsoft, they used like, um, I think it was a groomer, a dog groomer as an example. So you can put booking times in there and it kind of builds up a bit of a calendar. You can always just do a Skype uh, booking uh, or a Skype broadcast um, and you can go off and you can um, uh, do that still from Outlook or you can go to meeting.skype.com, I think it is, where you can do this for you uh, in the browser uh, and allow you to be able to do that. 
so yes, D, that's a great example. Something like a parents' evening could be used for for bookings, because uh, you can have external people book in times and, and request and, and kind of take out those times that are there. So that's a, that's a great example of how that could be used. I think you also say, why use Slido instead of chat? What are the benefits? The idea of, of Slido is that during my presentation, a lot of chat could potentially go on during that conversation. And I miss questions um, and um, there hasn't actually been too many in here, but I've certainly seen it before where there's been hundreds of kind of conversation and messages going on. You just miss the question. So it's just a great way of being able to store them on in here and then and, and kind of uh, uh, open it up from that point of view. What I will also do just now is I can um, unmute anybody. So if you want to unmute yourself and ask any questions, you're, you're more than welcome to. Um, otherwise, um, we are um, coming up to uh, five past four um, and we're, I'll happily feed it there. So feel free to, to answer, put any questions uh, in there or, or take yourself off mute uh, and ask away. Thank you, Dee. Thanks. Uh, I hope you have a, a, a good evening. And I think people are starting. Back. Alex. Hello. It's James. Hi, James. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Um, on 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 the new licensing model, um, temporary staff, you'd need a license for them, wouldn't you? So if you had someone covering someone, uh, if you've got cover staff or maternity cover staff, you would need to get you'd need to license temporary staff because you they need to access a computer in order to teach or as a supply teacher, you'd need to make sure you've got accounts for them, I'm assuming. Uh, yes, and some of the benefits you can do with your um, licensing company, say, I, I want to be able to have this license for so long. Um, so you can move those, increase those licenses, decrease those licenses uh, uh, as part of that process. Um, so that's one way of being able to manage that process uh, as part of that, increasing, decreasing. Now, there is a way that you potentially could decrease them and put everybody on an A1 license during August and save one twelfth of your licensing. Now, that's a lot of management to be able to do that, but it just shows that's the kind of thing that we can do should you need to be able to do so. Thank you. Anybody else? Now, well, thank you very much for, for joining. I'm going to end, end the um, the recording just here. Uh, but if you if you want to ask anything privately, I'll, I'll stay on for another minute or two. Anyone's and anybody who's uh, listening in to, to the recording, uh, feel free to, to get hold of me um, uh, on Twitter or uh, emailing me, um, and I'll do my best to, to answer um, your questions.